Okay, what I want to show you today is uh, how we rebuild these mercury water pumps. Uh, this style of water pump uh, is very rebuildable 99% of the time. It's very, very, very expensive. So it showed up, I think, on the 8.1s in 2001 on Mercruiser. And it, it kind of progressed from there. It ended up on 350s, 62s, that kind of stuff, inboard, uh, Bravo, and some Alphas, because some Alphas have two water pumps on the later ones. Uh, they have the pump and the drive that's normal, and they also have a um, raw pump uh, just like this on closed cooled models, I know, in the middle 2000s. Uh, so, uh, but anyway, this is a very popular pump. It's a very expensive pump. If you ever had to buy one, you've paid probably $700 to $1,000 for this pump. It is not cheap. So, uh, I'm going to go ahead and get started. I've already got the impeller removed, and this is typically how we get them like this. Okay, so the pulley's on. Uh, I'm going to show you how to pull this pulley off. You need some special tools. Uh, and by the way, this thread here is metric. It is eight millimeter by one, two, five. So I, I press the pulley on a different way. I'll show you, but chances are um, you may not, you, well, you may like my way if you got the tools. If not, you'll use, uh, it's gotta be a metric one. So if you got an old GM power steering puller, those are three eighths 24. So you need a modern puller um, such as this blue point um, or a Lyle that has that metric adapter. So without further ado, step one is let's get the uh, pulley off. So we're going to use our uh, blue point puller here. You got to be careful with these pullers. You don't want to damage the shaft. I see a lot of these come in, guys try to take these things off. And, you know, most most of your uh, big box parts stores today rent these tools or two. There's usually two slots to these. So this is the smaller slot. This one here is bigger. Tippy tappies and she's out of there. My puller doesn't go all the way, so. All right, I'm done with this. Again, this is the metric style. When we go to press this in, we'd have to thread this on there. Well, I'm sorry, this one. <laughs> this is the metric gate one. But I'm going to do it a different way, so I'm done with this tool. Next step here is I want to—I got to press the shaft out. But some of these models, the newer ones, have a snap ring here; others don't. So the first thing we need to do is get a chisel and knock this seal out and see what style we have. I've seen some later replacement pumps for Mercury that there is a uh, snap ring in here. Uh, this style is the older style, I believe. It's going to have what they call a tolerance ring. So. I'm just taking a chisel. Okay. And this is the style with snap ring. See, I was wrong. Sometimes there's no snap ring in here. Other times there's just a, uh, like I say, a press fit tolerance ring. So we'll go ahead and remove that snap ring. Just a set of uh, internal snap ring pliers. Just like that. And now I'm gonna press the shaft out. You could use a rubber mallet, I suppose, but it's just a lot easier with a press. and A lot safer, we don't wanna ruin anything. Press this right out. Okay. 
Now I am gonna put an impeller dry shaft kit in this because this is all grooved up here, the seal surface. So normally these are these are 202 bearings. So 6202 available anywhere. Um, normally I would press these out. In fact, I'll show you like I normally would. But like I say, this, this dry shaft is junk. So it's gonna get a dry shaft kit. But normally I would just press this out just like this. Then I would obviously press the bearings back on the shaft. But like I said, I am not gonna do that. It's got a pretty good groove in there, so we're gonna throw that away. So if I wasn't gonna throw that away, I'd use my two new 6202 bearings. You need this uh, Mercury 26-862040 outer seal. You need one of these inner seals, a 26-8M0146317, okay? That goes in here, I haven't taken that out yet. But we're gonna use this dry shaft kit here, this 8M0140001. So the next step is, let's get this seal out of here. I'll just take a chisel, go down through here, drive it home, drive it out, I should say. All right. So we'll inspect the, uh, this out here. A little bit of grooves in here aren't gonna hurt anything. You know, depending where you're boating, you know, if you're in a bunch of sandy areas that could get tore up, but that's not real bad. So we don't really care. Now this dry shaft kit comes with everything you need. So if you're not sure, you can always order this. Uh, the bearings are already pressed on the shaft and everything. And like I said, you can dry that shaft in and out with a rubber mallet. So if you don't have a press, but you need a press to get the pulley off, so, or a tool. Right, here's instructions, right? We're not gonna read those, who reads those, right? All right, so here's my brand new color dry shaft kit, bearings are already on. Okay. My parts bag here. And it comes for both setups, whether you got a tolerance ring or a snap ring. So if I did not have a snap ring, this guy would go right here at the end, I'll show you. So here's our outer seal, a new snap ring, and the inner seal. Now, this seal has a lip, right? Well, what's the old adage on lips? The spring-loaded lip goes towards what you're trying to seal. In this case, we're trying to keep water out of these bearings. So the lip has to go down, okay? This goes down like this, because we want the lip to be right here. We want to seal the water out of the pump. So the lip goes down. We give it a little bit of lubrication. We don't put nothing in dry. Okay. Should put her down in here with my fingers. Now I can use my old dry shaft, right? And we'll tap it in. On the outside. Taps it real easy, just like this. You so see, you don't want to damage it. It's rubber, so you can don't get carried away here. Just kind of walk around like this. It's nice and square. It looks good. All right, next step, let's put our impeller dry shaft kit, shaft with bearings in. Like I say, if you're not sure, you always mark these bearings. I, I've done so many of these, I don't mark them anymore, but you got to mark where these bearings are. There's a little spacer in here. The older pumps do not have a spacer, okay? So this is just something they do in the newer shaft kits. See, look, I can put that on my hand, all right? Take our new snap ring. Now again, but now I have a snap ring, then this tolerance ring would go in here like this, and then I'd drive my seal over the top, all right? But since I have a groove in my pump, it's a newer pump, it takes this snap ring. I believe this engine's a 2016, it's a repower, so like I say, most of them do not have the snap ring in my experience. 
but this engine is a replacement engine in this vessel. There it is, bam, just clicked in. Looks great. Make sure it turns good, it does. All right, if I, had a if I did not have that snap ring, the talon ring would go in and then the seal, but since I don't, we just put the seal in then next, okay? turns then we press our pulley on now if you don't have a press like me there's two ways to do this my way you're gonna see is a lot easier now this this is not flush with this so I got to make sure I put something in here so I'm just gonna use an old piston pin here okay this is why I keep stuff like this around the shop I'll set that right on top of my piston pin See what I'm doing here? I'm just gonna and that's flush, so we gotta keep going. Actually, what I'll do now is I'll use this piece that's flat. So it'll stop when I get there. There we go, we're there. Spins beautiful, no wear. I'm at the right depth. Like I say, this shaft has got to be a little bit below flush here. But this is already done. We'll put our impeller in. This is a Mercury number 47-862-232A2 or a CR 18-3016-1. I put impellers in dry because who cares? It's dry every time you start up anyway. So this is a double D. This is a double D slot. So I'm going to stick this in like this. Just shove it in like that. It's all in. Doesn't matter which way this goes. See, I can flip it the other way. So there's always folklore about which way the impeller is supposed to. You know, you got to put it in right for your rotation. These engines here are always left in rotation anyway, so it's going to go like this. You can see it flips either way. And that's it. This pump is all rebuilt. We'll go ahead and put the top back end on because, like I said, there's multiple different back ends if you got the one touch or whatever they call that drain system that has the uh, pump, but. That's a quick, easy way on how to rebuild these pumps and save yourself a pile of money.